okay, we've, we've made our softwood groove and the next thing we need to do is make our radius wafers so that they fit perfectly into our groove. Now to do that we're going to need a couple more things. We're going to need our second piece of uh, quarter inch plywood applied to our dowel pin. We're going to need double sided tape, uh, acetone, we're going to need a knife and some inlay wafers. Now what we're going to be doing to our plywood base is making two circular cuts in its surface so that it ends up looking a lot like this. Now these two circular cuts are very precisely positioned in that the inner edge of our outer cut needs to be cutting exactly outside the outer edge of our groove and the outer edge of our inner cut needs to be cutting exactly inside the inner edge of our inlay groove. Okay, so right now the router is set up as it was when we finished our softwood groove. So it, the diameter of cut that it is cutting is exactly the same as the diameter at the outside of our groove. So what we need to do is move the router bit out from our pivot point and we need to do so by the width of our cut. Now we know from our earlier measurements that the width of the cut is 0.491 inches, 491 thousandths. Now I want to use the micrometer adjustment to move the bit outwards that very precise amount. However, I see that given its last use, the uh, micrometer is not set at 50 and I want it to be because it's just easier to do the math if you start at 50, which is the same as zero. However, I don't want to move the fence. I want to preserve the setting I have. So what I'm going to do is move one of my stop collars against the fence, lock it in position. Now I loosen the brass and I can I can adjust my micrometer without moving the fence and at the same time I'm going to grab some more of the thread on the spindle so I'm sure that I'll be able to make all the adjustment that I need to make. But I'll end at 50 and I'll lock there and I'll move that stop back out of the way and now I can adjust by 491 thousandths. So that's going to be nine turns. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine turns get me, gets me to 450 and I have to go 41 more and that gets me to 491 and I'll lock that and because we're going to return to that setting probably several times I want to preserve it with my stop collars. So I'm going to use the outer pair, slide them against the spindle bar and lock them in place and now I'm ready to make my first cut. I'm only making a partial cut. I'm not going all the way around until I'm sure that this is set up properly. Uh, now I'm ready to move the router inwards. Okay, it's got to be cutting inside my groove now. So that means I have to move it in by the width of the cut plus the width of the groove. And I know from my measuring earlier that that is 0.837 plus 0.491 and that tells me I have to move the router bit in by 1.328 inches. So I'm going to set my, my uh, dial calipers to that and I'm going to use them 
to set my second set of stop collars that distance from the fence. So I've got the uh, calipers between the fence and the stop collar. And now I'll move the stop against the fence and I'll bring my second stop collar into position and I'm ready to make my second cut. And again, I'm going to make a partial cut and I'm going to make it in the same area I've made my first cut. Okay, now I'm ready to make a test cut. And to do that, I'm going to need one inlay wafer and my double-sided tape. Roll out some tape, stick one of the inlay wafers to it, cut it away. peel off the backing and I'm going to stick it down between my two cuts and you can see the inlay wafer has to be wide enough to span the area between the two cuts and overlap the cuts somewhat okay and with that firmly in place I'll make my two cuts Okay, a little bit of acetone dripped on that inlay wafer will flash through the end grain immediately and, and release the tape. And now the moment of truth, does it fit perfectly? And it does, as is typical. That, that micrometer adjustment is a wonderful thing. There's no movement. I'm going to check its fit with my softwood groove. Remember, we want it to be snug but slideable. And it's just what we would have. Excellent. Okay, so we have our stop collars set right where they need to be. So what I'll do next is I'll make these, I'll finish making these circular cuts and then I'll be able to stick wafers all the way around uh, that ring and cut as many as I need for my inlay. So uh, give me a couple minutes to do that and I'll show you how quickly uh, your inlay wafers can be perfectly shaped and then we'll start cutting inlay. Mm -hmm.